Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to use a VPN while traveling to help keep you safer while you're using various Wi-Fi networks during your trip. And like eSIMS, this is a tool that has been around for a while now. I definitely feel like I'm late to the party again, but very happy to have started to explore these services now that I'm starting to work more from different countries and I'm having to use various networks in hotels, in cafes, so I always want to have that extra layer of protection and as I went through the process of picking my own service and setting everything up, I thought it would be helpful to do a video just kind of walking through some of the things that I ran into and that you might want to keep in mind if you're interested in checking out a VPN for yourself. So excited to dive in. Before doing so, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing I wanted to talk about is what a VPN actually is. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and I won't get super into the weeds as far as the technical details of how everything works, but generally this is a tool that's going to help mask your IP address and encrypt your data to provide an extra layer of protection while you're using Wi-Fi at something like a Starbucks or even at your hotel. Oftentimes those networks don't have passwords or they can be accessed by anyone, so you don't really know who's watching and could potentially be stealing your data. And so to help illustrate how a VPN might keep you safe, you can think of yourself on an open network as someone just driving on the highway with other cars. Everyone can see what type of car you're driving, they can see your license plate, they can see how fast you're going, where you got on, where you got off, so it's just completely open. Maybe nothing bad happens, but there's potential for it. With a VPN, you essentially have your own private tunnel. No one can see where you got on, where you got off, anything about how you're traveling, type of car that you're using, your license plate. and so. That's a maybe simplified example, but I think it illustrates the idea of the fact that it just gives you that level of privacy that will keep you safer while you're using the internet wherever you are. And so for the purposes of this video, I'll be talking a lot about using a VPN while traveling internationally, but the truth is that it's always a great tool to have even if you're in your hometown and you're working from a local coffee shop, this is the type of thing that is still gonna be very helpful to just give you that extra peace of mind. And although VPNs can definitely add an extra layer of protection and are a great tool to have, there are some caveats that you want to keep in mind. First off is that it's not a silver bullet as far as internet security goes. So if you were to go to your email and download an attachment that had some sort of a virus on it, a VPN can't really protect you from that. So you still have to be very careful with the types of things that you're opening the types of sites that you're visiting, what you're clicking on, all the same things that you would want to keep in mind regardless of whether you were browsing at home, at work, or publicly apply with a VPN. So you still wanna be very, very careful with those things. The next thing you wanna think about is that your internet speed is gonna be slower while you're using the VPN. How much slower will depend on the service that you end up going with, as well as the types of sites that you're gonna be visiting, if you're gonna be streaming video, Generally, I haven't really felt a huge impact even when I've been streaming with the service that I went with. I'll talk more about that in a bit, but it is something that you want to keep in mind. And then the other thing to consider is that this is going to be an additional cost. I imagine there may be some free VPN services or tiers, but for you know the bigger names that are going to offer the most services and performance, this is something that will be a subscription model, so you may be paying annually or monthly depending on the plan and service that you end up going with. And it's not something that you necessarily have to keep forever. And so far, the costs have felt fairly reasonable. There's a lot of deals when you first sign up for one of these plans. And so you can use it while you need it and then kind of reevaluate. But definitely something I wanted to just call out. And so moving into picking a VPN provider, there's lots of reputable companies on the market. NordVPN is a very big name. Surfshark, Proton VPN. I did a little bit of research before diving in, but like we saw with my eSIM video, there are a ton of services available and it can quickly get overwhelming, particularly if you don't have specific features or things that you're looking for. If you just wanna you know, start browsing, I think that going with one of the bigger companies is probably the easiest place to start. I don't have any sort of affiliate relationship or sponsorships with the companies that I just mentioned. Those are just the ones that I kinda came across in my own research. I'll include a link to some of the things that I read that I found helpful to explain the differences between their services. The things that stood out to me as I was comparing some of the similarities and differences between the various providers were internet speeds 
As I mentioned in the last section, when you're using a VPN, your internet is gonna be a little bit slower and some companies have a faster speed when the VPN is turned on. And so that was one of the first things that I evaluated. Also, the amount of devices that were included in your VPN plan, when we get into the setup later in the video, I'll talk more about that, but generally, I wanted to have something that would allow me to use my laptop and at least my phone and my tablet with a VPN as well and have that all included with the plan. Some companies don't offer it for all the devices or some of them have unlimited. And so those were the main things because beyond that, there's a lot of advanced features as far as like extra privacy and setup and security. And that's just beyond my technical knowledge and what I was really looking to do with the VPN. The other thing that I was curious about was which ones did a good job as far as allowing you to kind of switch your location and see streaming services for things like Netflix and shows that aren't available in the region that you're in. That was actually one of the main reasons that I ended up going with a VPN was because I wanted to catch up on a show that I couldn't watch where I was traveling. And then the other factor that you wanna consider is of course the price. Each of these services is gonna have various plans, particularly if you're a new customer There'll be promotions if you sign up for multiple years, for months, and so you can kind of pick and choose depending on what's gonna match up best for your needs. I ended up going with like a year plan because I figured it was something that I was gonna be using quite a bit so that I could test it and I was still gonna be traveling a lot. And so which one did I ultimately end up going with? I went with Surfshark, which seemed to have the right balance of speed and price and availability for various devices. They seem to have very good reviews. Again, I don't have any sort of affiliate or sponsorship with Surfshark, so this is just the one that I'm honestly using, but I've heard great things about NordVPN, I've heard great things about ProtonVPN, and I'm sure if you dig into the details, if you're a little bit more technical or curious about some of the privacy policies that these companies can have, you know, there's definitely lots of information to dig into. And so once you've selected your VPN provider and purchased a subscription, you'll go through and set up an account on their website at that point you still won't be quite ready to start using the vpn to do that you will likely need to install a browser extension with surfshark they had a lot of great guidance on getting things set up i did have to use chrome or firefox or a compatible browser to actually install the plugin and then there's also mobile apps that you can download for your phone and your tablet so i went through and i downloaded the surfshark app for my iphone and i installed the plugin on chrome and so at that point, I'm now ready to actually turn the VPN on and start safer browsing. And so it's very simple once you have the tools installed. Basically, if you have a plugin on your browser, you'll click on it and you'll have a few options of where to connect as far as servers. Generally, if you pick something that's closer to the location where you are, your internet speeds will be a little bit better. And so you'll have a lot of options as far as what to pick, but they do recommend one. And so you can quickly connect and at that point, you're now browsing in a more secure manner. And so you can start to, you know, just use the internet as you normally would until you turn the VPN off. And if you've installed the app on your phone or your tablet, once you open it up, it's gonna be a similar process to what I just mentioned with the browser. So you'll have the option to quickly connect to one of their servers and they'll recommend the one that's gonna have the best performance. And then you'll be able to use the internet on your phone as you would expect. An additional option that Surfshark offers, and I imagine the other big VPN providers offer something similar, is the ability to download an app to your computer. And if you use that, once you turn it on, it can actually encrypt all of the traffic that's going in and out of your computer. With the plugin system that I mentioned earlier on the browser, you just have a button that is specifically linked to that browser. So if I'm using Google Chrome and I turn my VPN on, only the internet traffic that I'm using on Google Chrome is going to be encrypted. So if I have an email program like Outlook on my computer that I'm accessing outside of the browser, it's still not gonna be protected. But if I've downloaded the app to my computer and I turn it on, it can actually encrypt everything that's going in and out of my computer that's connected to the internet. So all that traffic will have that extra layer of protection. Now, that will have the largest impact to the performance of the internet. It's really gonna slow down a bit more than the other methods that I've mentioned. But if you're using those types of programs and you're working abroad, handling sensitive information, then it's probably gonna be worth the trade-off. And so at this point with my VPN set up and turned on, I was curious to see what it would be like to use it. And for the most part, everything has felt pretty much the same as when I'm regularly browsing the internet, which is a good thing. I haven't noticed any big issues with performance. 
I've been able to browse social media, watch YouTube videos, answer emails, do my work without any issues. And then one of the things that I was most excited about was the option to watch shows that weren't available in the location that I happened to be in. And so in this case, I was traveling, I was away from the US, and I actually wanted to keep up with Dexter Resurrection. I'm a huge fan of the show. It was almost the finale. And so that was one of the main reasons why I got the VPN. And I was able to connect to a server that was in the US and actually watch the show without any issues. And so if I'm at home and I wanna see shows that are only available in Canada or in the UK or something like that, the VPN allows you to do so, and so far it's worked well. I imagine that there will be situations where I'll run into some sort of geography that may block VPNs or where certain content may still not be available, so it doesn't seem like a foolproof method, but for the most part, it's definitely lived up to my expectations so far. And so that's pretty much it. I know that it can be overwhelming when you start to look into all the details about VPNs and just understanding what it is, all the different features that are included, but hopefully this video kind of helps simplify things a little bit. If there's anything that I covered that you have additional questions on, definitely let me know in the comments. And if you're curious to see a similar walkthrough on eSIMS, I'll include a link to the video that I did in the description below. I'll also include links to some of the other packing tips videos that I've done. And if you have ideas for other videos that you'd like to see, please let me know about those as well. And I wanna thank you for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.